Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Downs. More guidance on how to use Grasshopper. In this video, we're going to look at what we call the option list, or as I often call it, opt list. And the idea of an opt list is to provide a list of options that you can use, uh, you know, a taxonomy, if you will, uh, to uh, add to a data field. For example, here we have the fallacies that we've been looking at, and you can see that each fallacy actually belongs to a category, fallacies of distinction or appeal to motives in place of support. So what we want to do is in our fallacy record, we want to be able to select which one of these it belongs to. So if we go to Grasshopper, and if we look at the, uh, the form, so I'll open up the form, make list form. And if we open up the form for fallacy, what we're going to want to do is to add, you know, in addition to the title and the Latin version and the definition, we're going to want to add to that an opt list. And the opt list will define the category. So the code to do that is fairly straightforward. And uh, basically, it's this. I'll just type it in here. So this is the name of the field category. And then we're stating that we're using opt list. We're going to select one option at a time. We have a blank unused field. And then this word here will be the title that we put above our op list. So, uh, but what are the options? Where does it get its data? We need to define this particular op list. So it's the opt list for category in fallacy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new opt list. So make, you see we have a data type down here, opt list. Let's just look at some that already exist. For example, let's look at the opt list for feed format. Well, we have no, no data there. How about feed genre? That's better. See, so a feed can be in art or biology or, you know, a feed section. It might be in blog or news media. Feed status might be approved or on hold, etc. So there are these different categories that a feed can belong to. So now what we're going to do is make a new opt list for fallacies and for fallacy categories in particular. So new, now the title will be fallacy underscore category. That easy. And now for the data, so let's take a look. Our first category was fallacies of distraction, right? So we we'll put that in, fallacies of distraction. Here's the name of the category, and here's a code for the category. Now there's a few reasons why we might want to use a code. Um, and uh, one of those reasons is that the code part is hidden and the name part is visible. So let's have a look now. Uh, we've added the form, we've added this. Let's look at our fallacies. Let's look at slippery slope and see how now we have a section for categories. Here's our, our one option. We could create a new category if we wanted just by typing it in and creating it, um, but let's not. Um, so there's now, suppose we want more than one, well, let's list more then. So opt list, we'll go back to opt list again. Where, where did it go? Here we go, list opt list and fallacy category. And let's add a few more. We'll separate them with the semicolon. So appeals to motive in place of support. Here it is and perhaps uh, changing the subject, we'll have that as a category. And here we are. So now we're done. Let's look at our fallacies again. 
and now you see we have the different choices. The one we've selected is in white and the ones that we could choose are instead in a different color, uh, gray in this case. Now it doesn't turn properly to white but if we uh, loaded this again we'd see it. it is changed but we want it to be a fallacy of distraction, I think. So I need to fix the colors. I know, I'm sorry. Um, but that's the way it works at this point. It changes eventually. <laughs> um, so, okay. Um, how do we display that? Well, this is where it gets a bit tricky, right? Um, because it displays nicely here, but let's suppose we wanted to add the category to the view so we'll list the views and uh, fallacy uh, HTML should be right here somewhere there we go fallacy HTML so we could put it in the category right here right so category right now the normal way we would indicate the category is like this fallacy category and we'll close the paragraph there okay and so now when we look at a fallacy uh, let's look at false dilemma see no see this is just the code right and not the full name now there's two things we can do the easy way and the hard way, but the hard and much more flexible way. So what we could do is just change up the codes so the codes match the text. So I'll go back to opt list and fallacy category. And here instead of fallacies of distraction, instead of just the, the single word, distraction I'll use the full phrase okay so yeah it means I'm typing I'm putting everything in twice uh, you know it doesn't seem as appealing I, I get that but it works all right and then changing the subject we do the same thing now I do this a lot I do this so we have our fallacy.html view here and as you see, we don't have the category. But now we put the category in. Category. And now, because I've changed the value of the category, I'll be able to see the actual text. We'll, we'll take a look at that. So I've saved that. So let's go have a look. We'll look at false dilemma, the category. Well, it's still the old distraction category, right? So let's go back now to fallacies. And uh, let's see, false dilemma. So we'll just update those fallacies, those categories. And let's do it for the others as well, just to, for completeness. And for slippery slope, there we go. Now when we have a look, let's look at false dilemma. We have the full name, categories of, or fallacies of distraction. So that's the easy way to do it. But the hard way is to leave it the way it was. So let's go back. And uh, I'll make that opt list the way it was again. So list opt list and fallacy. Where did it go? Fallacy category. And I'll put them back the way they were. So here we are. Now we just have these little codes again, and of course I'd have to reset all of those categories. But what we want to do now is use this code to determine what the text will be. And 
the way we do that is we're going to use our language options. And uh, there's probably more to say about language, and I'll do that in another video. But basically, if, if instead of using the full text, I just use this, what I want to do is put that in what we call a lang string. So make list uh, list views. Let's go back to the views. Go back to the fallacy HTML view. So here we're just showing category, right? But instead, let's do uh, lang string. Oops, let's spell it correctly so we don't get silly errors. Lang string. There. And, and you can see the general format of this, right? Lang, short for language, string, and then a space. And then whatever it is we want to translate into some language. Now, the language we're using is English. Um, and I want to create a dictionary for this. Um, if it's one of the default language strings, I don't need a dictionary. And that I'll talk about later. But because we're using special fallacies type thing, we'll create a fallacies dictionary. So fallacies, okay. So now, now we have Langstring fallacies, which is the name of the dictionary. And this here, the value of which will be whatever the category code is, that's what we're gonna translate. So how do we set up these dictionaries? Well, the dictionaries are also opt lists, and that's why I'm talking about them in this video. Really, an opt list is kind of a generic way of storing data, right? If, if we look at our opt lists, uh, let's, let's go back and look at our opt list. Uh, so here we go. And I'll just pick an opt list, right? So we have the name. Well, actually, it's backwards here, the, the value and the name, right? The value. But usually, we would have the name and the value. I should probably switch that around in some future version of Grasshopper. Now, maybe one day I'll make these JSON files, and we can just put a JSON file in there. But for right now, that's what we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an opt list, and that'll be our dictionary. So let me just copy that. Well, let's copy all of this just because, okay. Now, so how are we going to do this? So let's create the opt list, new opt list. And it's the name of the dictionary, fallacies, dot, and then the language, en, because that's the default language that I'm using. If I wanted another dictionary for French, it would be fallacies.fr or fallacies.de, or whatever language you're working in. So now, like I say, it's backwards. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> it shouldn't be. But uh, there you have it. Uh, so in our dictionary, here's our code. And here's our value, and then a semicolon. Oops. It just put everything in there stupid thing okay fallacies distraction and then motives comma and then appeals to motives in place of support so you see how you see how that's a dictionary right uh, it's not a dictionary like we're we're defining things but it's a dictionary in the sense that we're giving values to individual codes. So there we are. There's our dictionary. So now, if my fallacy is distraction, when I use this dictionary, it'll show fallacies of distraction. So let's go back to our fallacies. Actually, let's go back to our opt list first, and let's make sure we've got our opt list. Now we do. We, we have the opt list updated, right? So, okay, and of course it's backwards, but 
So you see, it's sort of the same thing, right? Only it's backwards. I really shouldn't have done that. But what can I say? So, uh, so there's our optimist. So now, let's go to our fallacies. And we'll just reset all of these again. So, again, we're giving, we're calling them all fallacies of distraction. I really should make that better, like, you know, a nice down, up kind of motion for my buttons. Okay. Uh, that's CSS. All right. So now, when I look at my fallacies, let's look at false dilemma. It says fallacies of distraction. You see? And so even though the HTML template simply says distraction it's run it through this language thing and now it says fallacies of distraction and so that's the hard way of using opt lists but ultimately it's the better way right because it means now you can use these dictionaries to create uh, translations of terms that are used a lot in the interface where you're defining part of the interface and the Optilist is a classic example of that. So that's it for this video. That's it for Optilists. And uh, again, we'll come back to languages later on in another video. Uh, but that's it for now for the subject. Thanks for watching.